What's going on, guys? We'll get the live started soon. What's up, Julian? My man. Geo. What is the live about? All right. If you guys didn't see my story from yesterday, the live's just going to be with, I'm going to be going live with Creativity Train soon. And we're just going to talk about like um, going, going abroad to play soccer. And, you know, if it's a good option for you, I get this question a lot in my DMs and it's not just, just to put it simply, it's not the best option for everyone. And that's what we're going to go over um, once my man joins. Hold on. Sketch. There we go. Sorry, Frank. I'm not. <laughs> I can't. Accept your request. Hey, Jordan. There we go. What's going on, Ahmad? How you doing? Doing good. What about you? Doing great, man. You, uh, I think your time zone's 8 p.m. right now, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes, 8 p.m. All right, that's good. That's good. All right. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about the topic today, bro. I think, um, I think this is one of like the most interesting topics to me. I get this question a lot in my DMs. And yes, right. it's really interesting to me because it's like, it, it's something that everyone wants to do. It's just, the thing is, it's just not the best option for everyone. So, you know, I'm excited to get into it today. Um, for the viewers right now, we got 25 viewers. I think that's good. Um, Want to just give a quick introduction on yourself. Um, I think that would be good for the viewers at home. Yes. Okay. So uh, my name is Ahmed. I'm from Lebanon in the Middle East. Uh, I'm currently 18 years old. Uh, I'm free agent. I'm searching for a team. I've played uh, roughly, I think, two years academy uh, in the academy uh, youth leagues, and uh, I'm the owner of Creativity Trains. Love that, bro. Um, just for anyone, oh, 16 viewers. People left. Damn. All right. Uh, just for any new followers out there, my name is Jordan Conklin. I play for Ohlone Community College right now. Uh, just turned 19 like a few weeks ago and i um, going to go into the topic today of playing abroad. And want to just get right into it? Yeah, sure. So uh, we're going to begin with a short introduction. So when we talk about going abroad, uh, many people will think about going to Europe because Europe is one of the biggest countries uh, in terms of football. Uh, it has the best players, the best leagues, the best five leagues, uh, and uh, all that stuff. So when we talk about this topic, uh, we're going to think about going to Europe. But here, uh, it's, it is not only about going to Europe. It's about going to anywhere in the world where uh, we're where we could find uh, good teams uh, that play professional soccer or professional football. <clears throat> uh, so before thinking about this or thinking if you should go abroad or not, there are some questions you should ask yourself. Uh, so the first, the first one is, uh, where are you living? Are you living in a country uh, where there are so many opportunities? Or are you living in a country where there aren't so many opportunities? For example, if you live in a smaller country like uh, what uh, New Zealand, there aren't so many opportunities. And on the other hand, there aren't so many good players, or there aren't so many 
challenging players on these opportunities. But if you're living in a bigger country, for example, uh, if you're living in England, uh, in Spain, or whatever, uh, you'll find uh, a lot of opportunities, but uh, it's harder to go pro because uh, it's harder to, to show up. It, it's harder to get a, a place in the starting 11. So you should know where I'm living. For example, uh, for me, uh, I'm living in Lebanon. It's a small country, so not so much opportunities. And uh, not so much showing players, not so much uh, challenging players. Uh, for you, for example, Jordan, you're living in the U.S., right? Yeah. So it's a big country. You have a pro league. You have the MLS, the USL, USL2, and a good level of college soccer. So, so uh, you have more opportunities. Mm -hmm. If you compare your, uh, your situation and my situation. Uh, the next question is, is, is there a professional league in your country? Uh, like, for example, there are countries where there aren't professional league. Yeah. Uh, where, yeah, where the football isn't that high. So, uh, a, simple, a, a simple solution to know if you're living in a country where there are a professional league or not, uh, is to watch the league. Just watch the matches. Uh, you should know how, how to watch them. Uh, if you know the players, uh, if the matches, uh, the rhythm of the matches is uh, high, uh, the stadiums are good, uh, and teams are paying players good wages to play, then mm -hmm. it's a professional, a professional league. But if it isn't this situation, you're actually, actually not living in a country where there, are, uh, where there is a professional league. So in this situation, you should think about going abroad. Yeah. And, and something about going, going abroad, a lot of players don't understand, is that there are so many sacrifices. So if you're willing to go abroad, you're sacrificing time with family, time with friends. Uh, you're sacrificing a lot of money because uh, when you go abroad, uh, you have to pay for your visa, for your ticket, uh, and uh, for your residence, what you're eating, and all that stuff. Mm. There isn't any protein that's going to pay you anything when you are on trial. Before signing, you're not going to gonna be paid anything. So uh, it's a problem right here. So mm. if you could, if you could uh, sponsor that financially, if you could take that from, from the financial side, it's good. But if not, uh, then you should find the solution mm. because uh, obviously it's it's better to go abroad. It's better to to experience something new. So for me, I think I I want to go abroad. If I got the chance, uh, surely I will go abroad. I will find uh, any oh or any uh, any country to play in mm. and. You, you should also ask, ask yourself, do you need a visa? Do you need a work permit? Do you need a residence permit and all that uh, paper? Because uh, it's not easy. Like, if you watch uh, some YouTube channels, like Become a Lead, Spencer Moller, I think you know them. Yeah. Uh, they went to Germany over there, but they said it's so hard to get a visa, a work visa. Mm -hmm. So if you could get it, if you have a good passport of, or if you live in Europe, for example, and you want to go somewhere in Europe, uh, it'll be easier for you. But uh, if you live in uh, somewhere like, for example, in Asia, and you need a, a visa, a work visa, so it'll be harder in this situation. And uh, I should add, add also uh, that there is, or for example, uh, if you go anywhere in the world, there will be a competition. Like anywhere where there are teams that are willing to pay uh, a good wage or a wage that players could, could live only from football, you'll find a good competition. You'll find a lot of good players. So don't ever think that if you go uh, 
uh, to a smaller country, <laughs> it'll be easier. It's, it's not mm -hmm. easier. It's just a, a different path, for example. Yeah. That's why I wanted to point out. Um, it's, it's like a lot of players want to go abroad um, for the simple reason, like, let's say, like, your country. Um, I think I get a lot of messages from people from India, too. They say, like, they don't care a lot about football there. And so they want to go to like, let's say the United States for opportunities, but it's not like, it's not like everything's at the United States. Like if they don't, if there's not enough attention on India, that means there's probably not as much players there that are like trying to like go up the higher levels there. And so that in turn makes it an opportunity because there's not like as many players there to, you know, compete against. Whereas in the United States, there's a lot more opportunity, which means there's a lot more players there that you're having to compete against. So it kind of balances out. And so really the most important thing you should realize here is that you should be trying to establish yourself where you are right now before you even consider going abroad. Because if you're not like one of the best players in your area, like right now, you sh really shouldn't even be thinking of going anywhere else. Because wherever else you go, there's going to be another negative factor that's going to make it just as difficult to get recruited as it was in your previous country. So I think that's something really important that you pointed out as well before this. Yeah, surely. You should be able to play at the highest level in your country and then you should think about going abroad because it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're thinking about, about going abroad, uh, it's not that simple. And here we are not saying that we should not think about that. It's, I said, it's, it's always better to experience new things. But before doing this step, you should be 100% uh, sure about what you're going to do. Like, for example, you should have so many uh, teams that, you, that accepted you as a trialist. Mm -hmm. So you're going there. Is, uh, if the first trial failed, you go second fail third and you go, you, you go down and you, you, you search. And uh, another th thing, uh, now maybe uh, you may think that uh, it's easier to, to go abroad in a smaller country. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, yes, it's easier to go pro in smaller countries, but uh, the professional level in the smaller countries isn't as high as the professional level in, uh, in the bigger countries. Like if you go, uh, for example, if you go in to India and you reach the top level there, you're not going to be the best player in the world. Mm -hmm. You're going to need to go somewhere else. So it's, it's, it's good as a first step, but it's not as good as a final solution. Yeah, one thing I wanted to point out, um, you sent me a video before this, and it's hard to talk about this, not from experience, because I haven't played abroad yet. And so I do plan on doing it in the future, but I have not done it yet. So it is hard to talk without that experience. But the video you did send me, it, it brought up a huge, a huge point that I wanted to bring across is that, um, what was it? I, you, it was the video from Become Elite. It was where he said... Uh, uh, what what was it you just you said you brought up something uh, just now what was it again yeah that uh, if you go to India for example and you go to the highest level there you're not being at the highest level possible you're not being at the level of elites for example yeah. in Europe that's it yeah, yeah um, it was I forgot what it was um, but it was like I said for yeah it was in the video you just sent me yeah, wait, just a minute. Oh yeah, it was um it was the video from Kumli. It was where he said like, you know, if if you're if you're on a team or if, if you're in a country and then they're playing if they're paying livable wages it it's it's not like it's going to yeah. be easier in specific countries it's going to be just as hard if you're getting livable wages like that's the hard thing about playing abroad is that um you, you can't really do it for the money that's why finance like the, your financial situation is so important 
and you have to like make sure that's like settled because you know if if you're trying to get on a team and you think going to this country is going to be easier than another in terms of like the finance the like financial situation if you're looking for a team that's going to pay you like livable wages it's going to be hard in every single country and so you can't just go somewhere else thinking that you know like if an, a team in the middle east is like easier to get on a team with livable wages it's not going to be like that like there's always going to be those players there that are going to compete for that spot um and that's why i think there was a comment earlier that said um the us systems like pay to play i think i don't think that's necessarily no that's kind of almost an excuse in some regards it is like if you're not really that good but you have the money i think some players can get their way through but if you're good enough and you don't have the financial situation the t- teams will pay for you to play um and they will make it easier they will make accommodations so i don't like that saying i think it's almost kind of an excuse um that ties into the financial situation um that's what you really need to like have have like f- like figured out before you consider like going abroad anywhere else yeah you you should plan it before uh before taking the step mm-hmm. and uh, as i said it's it's not easier if you go to a smaller country or another country like i i'm struggling to get opportunities and i think you're also you're also struggling struggling to get opportunities and uh, it's the same experience mm-hmm. but it's just uh, uh, it's just different like different yeah path. it's just in a different yeah. way like different place but it's difficult for everyone it really is Yeah like, sure. Um like even if you're even if you have like a lot more opportunities, you know, sometimes it's like it comes down to like picking the right one or you know, you don't want to pick the wrong opportunity. So at the end of the day it is still hard for everyone like in terms of narrowing down their opportunities abroad. Um but that's why there there's so many different factors that play into it and it's like you know, it, you you kind of have to just boil it down to what's what's what what which factors are the most important to you and like help that make that um help with your decision of like where you want to go yeah sure and to go back on the sacrifice point a lot of players go abroad and then go back to their home to their home countries because uh, they couldn't uh, get to the to the rhythm of life without their parents without their friends being alone Uh, being depressed if if we mm-hmm. could say say that because it's actually hard it's 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 yeah. so hard to go to go abroad i have so many friends that are abroad now and it's hard to be uh like alone with without your family and you have to do everything and mm. you should you should add that you should train every day you should go to the gym you should eat <laughs> well uh, and uh you should go to 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 the facilities you should sleep 8 10 hours per per day and uh, all that stuff and you should watch yourself so you can't go partying you can't uh, drink you can't do anything mhm i think that's the hardest part and i think that ties into doing the best where you are right now you kind of, like not only do you have to establish yourself like where you are right now and be one of the best players in your area but you should also be you should you should be taking on responsibility because that's you're going to have a lot more responsibility when you're going abroad because you're not going to have like your f- immediate family and friends like right next to you to help you out whenever you need the help you're going to be alone like 80% 90% of the time and so you're going to have to really figure out if if you haven't been responsible where you like at your home then it's you're going to be like struggling when you go abroad because you're going to have to do everything yourself and on top of that you're still going to have to train if you're in school you're probably going to have to do your online classes there um and then you have to like get all the, like the food the finances like figured out and it's a lot and so you should be trying to i'd say for like the viewers out there i think it's important to almost even if you're at home right now just almost imagine that you're abroad and then make it your responsibility to to carry out everything that you need to do every day like make your own food do everything yourself make your own money find different ways of making money i think that is so important because you're going to get to you're going to have to do that when you're abroad 
And I think it's good to figure that all out right now before you're in another country outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest tip I can give for the viewers out there. Yeah. And uh, another, another solution, there are so many uh, good players that choose to study abroad and mm -hmm. on the other hand, play abroad. So he's getting a student visa to go, for example, to another country, to Europe, and then play, for example, for the university team, play for the team of uh, his region, and then build himself up to get up to the third, fourth league and play pro. So it's, an, it's another solution that, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a question from Awasali5616. He said he's from Pakistan, but here it's sport. Here the sport is cricket only. So I'm assuming he's saying that they really only pay attention to cricket in Pakistan. Um, I think this is another factor for you, uh, Awasali, if I pronounce your name right. I think that's another factor you have to consider is like, you know, does your country really pay attention to, to football? Um, it's a, it's a hard, that's a hard one because, you know, like if they, if they aren't really paying attention to it, then the opportunities probably aren't really there. But at the same time, that means there's probably not a whole lot of players that are competing, like high level players that are competing yeah, exactly. for those spots. So I think, you know, if you have like a lot of your factors, like figured out your financial situation, uh, your responsibility and all that stuff, I think, no, it's good if you want to go abroad, but I think the most important thing for you right now is to just establish yourself where you are right now the best you can. Um, if you're on a team, I'm not sure if you're on a team, but um, just do all you can right now, and then you can start looking abroad. I think that's what I'd... I think that's... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, got another question. Did you have anything else you wanted to yeah, talk about? Uh, actually, you're not. We could... Uh... If, if someone has a question, we could answer yeah, we about like, this topic or yeah. another topic. And if you have anything else you wanted to point out, um, you can just, you can just, uh, you can say it because uh, there's a lot that goes into this topic. Um, yeah, sure. I got one question from Muhammad. He says, is becoming a football coach good if you like it? A football coach, like, honestly, I was... I'm thinking like if I don't go pro in the future, I would honestly love to be a coach. Um, I think, you know, being involved in the game, is just, it's an amazing feeling. And I feel like making a living off of it would be make it even better. I think if you want to do coaching in the future, I think there's no better time than right now to start your own social media account. Like, like, like we're doing right now. Um, I think you yeah. should start a social media page, like post soccer content every day. Um, post like your drills, try to help people out, build a community. And I think, you know, there's no better time to do it right now than like with social, the rise of social media. I think it's really important to do that. So in the future, if you do want to fall back on being a football coach, um, you have your social media page, you have your community and you can do like one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, you can do team trainings. There's so many opportunities that go into this. And that's another thing that plays into the financial situation of going abroad. You should, be trying to find different ways of making money and coaching is another way of making that, of making that money. That's why I want to try to do with Conklin official is start doing like one-on-one -on -one coaching, maybe like team, like groups of four practices, um, individualized programs on my website. That's, those are things I want to do in the future. And it's just another way of making money. So I, and giving back to the community, that's the most important thing to me. And so if you do want to become a football coach, I think, you should be getting on social media. I think it's a really good opportunity and it, there's a lot of things that you can do with it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you could also learn uh, some, uh, some coaching, like uh, search on, the, on, on Google, for example, for, for courses, coaching courses. Mm -hmm. There are so, so many, for example, Bar Barcelona, uh, the England FA, uh, the, foot, the Football Association England. So try to learn mm -hmm. and uh, then have some certificates, for example, and it will be easier for you in the, mm -hmm. in the next step. Yeah, I think it's definitely, definitely, to answer your question, Mohammed, it's definitely a good route. Um, 
if you're if if you're still going for a football career, I'd say do that first because while you're young, you should be trying to do that. But football football coaching, I think that's a great opportunity as well. Um, got another question from Habib. He says, "I am 15. I am good at football. I'm from Lebanon, living in Kuwait. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Kuwait, Kuwait, Kuwait. Kuwait yeah, I'm Kuwait. Kuwait. I am still without a club. I will be." In a club soon, do I have a chance? Um, well, I can't really answer that off based off a comment. But considering you are 15 years old, um, you you have time, and I don't want to use time as an excuse to like wait. But 15, you are that's a young age to be at, and so I think you know if I were to say that age is just a number, I'd be lying because it really is like the older you get the harder it will become to go pro um, if you haven't got the experience. But you are 15, and if you are going to be in a club soon, Habib, don't don't stress about that because 15 is a young age. Um, I, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, if you are going to be on a club soon, then I would just worry about performing at that club. And then, you know, if you want to, like, push up the ranks and stuff like that, you know, that's – something in the future that you can do but just know that you are young and you don't have to worry about that if especially since you are joining a club um i think it's important to yeah. know yeah i think it's important to know at 15 i get a lot of people asking like i'm 16 17 at this at, at this club is it too late for me you really can't say it's if it's too late because if you're thinking that then it's only going to slow you down so you just have to keep going keep pushing um and then just see where life takes you because you can't really answer that question at that young, young of an age, especially. Yeah. And to add to, to what you said, uh, Habib, I was 15 years old when I entered my uh, first or when I entered the first football team. And now I'm 18. I'm, I think I'm, I'm on a decent level. So don't, don't stress about it. Uh, I used to stress so much about it, like ask if 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 I'm if I'm old, if I sh should continue, if if I'm wasting time. Uh, honestly, you couldn't know if you're old because, for example, there are so many players that shine when they are 25, 26. Exactly. And if you put in the work, the hard work, you work every day. You're not losing anything, mm -hmm. either. You, either you'll be a pro or you have put all what you have and you're never going to regret it. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. I love that. Um, got another question from Shaikh. I, I keep butchering these names. Um, he said, can I become a player at 21? Um, that's kind of the same thing that I said. Um, 21, it's, it's, it's still like, depends on your situation, what teams have you played for, how much experience do you have? Um, but at the end of the day, um, like you just have to keep going. Um, I think 21 is still like a good age to go, to go pro. Um, but it, it really all depends on your situation. I can't really answer these questions based off just one comment, but you know, if, if you're still like, if you're like 28 and 29 and you just like, I think that's probably a little bit too late, you know, it still depends on your situation, but, um, I think 21, you're, you're still at a good age. So do not stress about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see another question. Um, let's see. Got a question from Martin. He said, any advice to improve vision and self-confidence? Um, for vision, uh, I will just add that I feel like vision, you can't really train that individually i think that all comes down to how many like the games that you play like pl i think just playing more you'll start to see the game better and so to answer that question i think just also self-confidence just play the game more like play more games play more pickup games 4v4 7v4 or 7v7 11v11 i think just playing more games honestly just it makes you see the game better and it makes you more confident in your ability and so it is hard to train that individually, but you kind of just have to find people in your area to play with, 
just to play more. And I feel like, you know, that's where the best players are born from. They're born from the streets, like playing football on the streets. Um, they're like cones. I don't think like doing individual, like dribbling drills with cones. I think that's good to do still, but that's not how you become a great player. It's just like playing more, play more, play more. That's the best advice I could give for that. Yeah, and also to improve that, uh, your vision, just keep your head up. Yeah. Just watch left and right. When you get a pass, when you give a pass, just watch, know where the, where are the players. For example, if you're doing uh, one touch passing with, with with a wall, just add a little bit of uh, of vision, like pass, watch left, pass, mm -hmm. watch right, and it'll, it'll be... Uh, easier for you mm -hmm. than in, in matches. Yeah. And one thing I remember, um, I think it was from a Lampard interview. He said something like, when he's playing games, he's always, his, his like his first game for West Ham, I think, or Chelsea, I think it was West Ham. But his first game, he said his dad, he would always hear his dad in the crowd yelling, pictures, pictures. And what he meant, like pictures, he meant like picture on the field. Always have a picture on the field. That's his first thought that he wanted for Lampard is to always have a picture of the field, nothing else. Don't worry about, you know, the, don't worry about if the team, if, if the other team's better than you, um, if you're, if you had a bad touch, just always have like in the first, the first thought of your head, just think picture of the field. And that'll like, it'll make you want to like scan the field more. Um, it'll make you always want to have like a picture of the field. So it's not even like vision. I think it's not even like, like not being vision, I think is just being able to have like a better picture of the field. I think that's something Frankie de Jong talked about as well. It's like, you have to have a good like picture of the field, like constantly. And that's how you can improve your vision as well. Um, question. Let's see. Uh, how do I impress at football trials? Um, one piece of advice that I've gotten that's really stuck with me on this question is like in previous trials that I've gone to, I've always thought um, like, how can I impress the coaches individually? That's what I would always think immediately when I go to trials. But I think a better way of looking at it is if you're doing like an 11 v 11 at a trial, I think the best thing to do, like the first thought that should be in your head, I think is how can I help the team? How can I help the team win? And I feel like individual performance will follow that. Um, if you're just self-centered, if you're focusing on how you're going to perform, you're probably just going to do what you think will make you look good in front of the coaches and not the team. And team performance is a really important thing. But not only is it that, but like if you're focusing on the team first, individual performance will follow. And so it's not just about how you perform, it's how the team performs. And so... I would say, you know, if you're at a trial, you know, just help help the players around you. Don't be self-centered. I'd say just help the people around you, even if they're like, even if the trial hasn't even started yet, like just talk to the players, talk to the coaches, be open with everyone else. Don't be just like with yourself. Um, I think it's important to be like open and help other people. And then when you're actually playing, help out your teammates, play to their correct foot, yeah. give them a good weighted pass communicate that is extremely important if you want to stand out of trial to be loud i think it's important to be communicating as much as possible not just loud but like smart as well like don't just loud for the sake of being loud be like smart with the way you talk and yeah i think just to answer that question is to help your teammates out as much as possible yeah and you could also just have fun when playing because mm. uh, when you're having fun you're playing at your best yeah so don't stress too much, uh, have fun, and uh, try to help your team, as Jordan said. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, think it's, I think that's something really simple that I feel like a lot of players forget is that we started playing this game to have fun. And then the more seriously you take this game, the more fun I feel like goes away from that when you keep focusing too hard and you're not really – letting loose. I think it's good to let loose to have fun with the game. Cause I feel like that's where you play more naturally. I feel like that's when I'm more in the zone is when I have a, a drive to not only be competitive, but to play the game, um, to have fun. And I feel like that's something a lot of people forget. 
Um, how to let's see. Mm, trying to pick a question. Um, okay. How to actually perform in games? I mean, in trainings, I can pull off all the tricks and skills I have, but in games, it just doesn't come naturally. Um, I think that comes down to confidence as well. If you're performing well in training and you're doing the skills naturally, that means you're in the zone in training. You're probably having fun. You're probably more confident. Um, but when it comes to a game, you're probably feeling more nervous and you probably lose that confidence. And that's probably why you're not performing those skills is because you've lost that confidence and you've lost that, you know, like in training, you're probably having fun, but in games, you're probably too nervous. So I think it all comes down to confidence there. Um, yeah. yeah. And try to play simple. Yeah. It's not about skills. Mm -hmm. It will not impress coaches. If you're doing, if, if you're doing a lot of skills, you're not playing football, you're playing freestyle. So play, play as simple as you can. Mm -hmm. And I'd say like, if you're going to do a skill, I think it should be like really simple, like a fake, like a fake, or sharp cut, like I think those are the skills that um, yeah, have more of, have more of an effect on the game. To be honest, not like a rainbow flick. I don't think that. No, that's not really yes. what coaches are looking for. Um, let's see. I think we've got this question from Amir. He said, "I'm 17 years old and I'm from Iran. What can I do to become a better player?" So, Amir, I think you should. Find a team. If you're not on a team, find a team. Uh, play as much as you can. Play football. Play matches. Uh, and uh, try to improve your physicality. Mm -hmm. Like body, body workout. You don't need a gym. And uh, workouts. Just uh, you try to work with the ball. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Yeah, Amir. Um, definitely get on a team if you can. And if you do get on a team, um, extremely important for you to, I think it's really good if you could get to team training early and then stay late. That'll not only be like, you know, I think that looks good to the coaches as well and to your players. I think that's, um, if you're getting to training early, coming out late, um, it looks good to the coaches and players. Not only that, but you should be able to like practice your first touch before training or work on like shooting and crossing after training. I think those are really good too, to improve, just getting in those extra reps. Um, and you're 17 years old, so that's a good age. Um, yeah, just try and get on a team and establish yourself there. Yeah, sure. Let's see. Um, got a question from Habib. When I play, people tell me I'm really good, but uh, I am 1v1, I will lose physically. I think he's saying, like, he's technically good, but he's not, not physically, like, he gets... I think that's what he's saying. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Work. Nobody work out. Yeah, I think... Nobody do yeah. Physical work out. Yeah, I think that's um, and also like if you want, just play like 1v1 against a friend or like someone that's going to challenge you, um, like shielding the ball and stuff like that. Playing 1v1 with someone is especially like I think the best way to do it. Um, it doesn't have to be just gym workouts. You can play with someone and try to like emulate like game like situations, just playing 1v1, shielding the ball and stuff like that. I feel like that's really good to improve your strength on the ball not just not just gym workouts but gym workouts still are really good to do um amir says we're not answering his questions here let me see amir we just answered his questions. oh yeah we did okay it's yeah that was old comment. um there's a question from martin i think it was any advice to improve no we answered that yeah uh it's question from I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's how can we increase stamina uh, faster? How to increase... Okay, yeah, stamina. Um, well, the simple answer I can get is to play more games because I feel like that's where fitness comes from. But if you do want... if I, I will get specific with this. 
Um, cause I've seen a lot of progress with my stamina when I've done progressive overload. That's the most important thing for me is, so let's say you're in off season. I think off season is a good time. Actually, no preseason preseason is a good time to be working on your fitness, especially. And so, you know, if you have team training, if you have team preseason, then you should be careful with how you do your individual sessions. But, um, if you can just train alone, I think it's good to have, if you can, set out like a specific period of time and do specific workouts like each week track your progress and make sure it's improving every single week so i think a good thing to do is i'm going to bring up an example let's say you can do three fitness sessions per week in your preseason, and so you want to be mixing up your fitness you don't want to be just doing a long like five mile run and you also don't want to be just doing short interval runs you want to mix it up because there's a lot of different um there's a lot of different movements um when you're playing football and you have to run a long distance you also have to explode in different directions and so i think it's important to break it up three sessions per week one of them being um short distance and then medium distance and then long distance and so short distance can be like agility work like sharp cuts um and then like medium distance can be uh it can be like uh i could say like 40 yard sprints i'm not sure for but like 40 yard sprints um eight times or eight sets and then like long distance could be like a 5 mile run and so you break up those distances and it's like you do that three times per week and for like four weeks straight and the most important thing to be doing here is to be tracking your progress and making sure that you're improving um, your time and each week so that you can see like the gradual progression. And I think that's the most important thing is to be gradually progressing each week, no matter what you're doing, just make sure you're gradually progressing each week to make sure that you're actually getting the fitness, um, improving your fitness there. Yeah. Mm, let's see. We've got another question. It's about any advice to get good sleep before games. So for sleep, uh, I may see so much posts on on Instagram, for example, like don't use your phone two, two three hours before game, uh, before going to sleep to going to bed. Uh, don't eat two hours or, th- or three hours before going to bed and mm. uh, all that stuff. But I think it it comes to you personally like you should experience you should try everything and uh, what works the best mm-hmm. you should keep, you should keep keep on doing so and you should have uh, ob- obviously each each night eight nine ten or ten, nine or ten hours of sleep mm-hmm. uh, especially before games and you should have also nap time so you could let the body recover a bit and uh, hydrate also yeah i think the most important thing there is just find what works for you um it, it, like there's no set amount of like a lot of people work on different sleep schedules i think it's good to get at least eight to ten hours of sleep um especially since you're an athlete it's like sleep is the most important form of recovery so you should definitely be getting at least eight to ten hours of sleep every day um but different people have different ways of getting that sleep. But what works best for me is to just have a set like sleep schedule. So like try to aim to go to sleep at the same time every day and then wake up at the same time every day. I think it's really good for um, like just keeping consistent with the schedule. I think that's important. Um, you don't want to be like, I, I, I don't like going to bed like 9 p.m. one day and then like 1 a.m. the next, that makes me feel really bad because it's it's like your body needs, I think I think it's good to have like a schedule, like sleep time for your body. Um, and then I think, yeah, it's good to have naps throughout the day. Um, usually I just take power naps. I don't usually do like hour, two hour naps like other people do. Um, I, th- I feel like that's just what, what works best for me. And honestly, yeah, it's just like what works best for you. But at the end of the day, like sleep is the most important form of recovery. So you should be getting at least eight to 10 hours of sleep every day. Um, no matter what way you're doing it, you know, you should, you should, as an athlete, be getting a lot of sleep. Yeah. Um, 
And it's not like, you know, if, if it's the day before a game, you shouldn't be like, oh, I got to get more sleep because it's the day before a game. No, I think you should always just be trying to get a lot of sleep. Um, just keep it consistent and not yes. not just do it for the sake of the game. Um, yeah, surely. Every yeah. day you should get eight plus. Seven. Yeah. It's not just that. Habib asked, how can I improve my left foot? Uh, I made a lot of videos on this, basically just saying to use it more. Um, there's yeah. no specific drill that's going to help it. Um, you know, if, if you want, you can challenge yourself to like for two weeks or for like at team training sessions, just try to use your left foot over your right foot or like if you're right footed, like just use your left foot more than your right. I feel like that just gets you out of your comfort zone of just using your right foot and then using your left foot more. I think, you know, if you want to do that, then go ahead. But at the end of the day, just, you just got to use it more. Um, that's why you're, that's why you have a dominant foot. It's because um, like you've used it a lot more than your weaker foot. So, you know, if you can use, just use your weaker foot more, I think that's, you know, that's the best way to put it. Yeah. And uh, to add also, you could do some wall passing with uh, your left foot, some juggling. Mm -hmm. uh, I have improved so much my weak foot by doing uh, that for two or, th or three months, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got be better and better. Yeah. So now I, I use it normally now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, using a wall is really good. Like just doing wall passing. Um, you can do that. I think it's just like wall passing, just using your left foot maybe. Um, I think that's really good. Like you can do a lot with the wall. Um, I would definitely try to do that. Um, uh, what is the fastest way to improve your sprint? Um, I don't have, well, I've actually not really done a whole lot of sprint training in my life. So I don't have a whole lot of um, validation to answer this question. But I think if like, from what I know, if you want to improve your sprint speed more, I think it's important to be working on like your top sprint as much as possible. Um, probably shouldn't do this in season um, if you have a lot of intense team training sessions and games. But um, the, really the best way to improve like your sprinting is to just work on your top sprint. Um, people use like weighted sleds. Um, I don't know how good that is. I'm not sure if it's really that good. Um, or like a speed parachute. You could probably use that too. But also working on your strength as well, like your leg strength, um, doing plyometrics, working on getting like a, like a balanced strength composition in your body. Um, and that's good for like sprints, uh, improving your sprint speed as well. Um, but just to answer the question, I think just um, work on your top sprint more and just try to like gradually, try to gradually increase it every week. Um, let's see. Amir asked, how many hours a day do you practice? Um, I'd say I'm going to go into this with a training mindset, not just soccer, not just football practice, but like mental practice as well. Um, I'd say I probably get in like, my team trainings are usually two hours. And then I try to like do juggling sessions outside of that since our team trainings are intense. So I usually aim, I try to aim for two to three hours of actually no well usually the juggling is usually really low intensity so i try to aim for around two hours per day and since my team trainings are two hours i usually just try to show up early um just to work on like my first touch and do something light but you shouldn't be over like i don't think you should be training too long it's really about how intense is your training like yeah. during the session um it's not just how many hours you do um, but if you do want to get in like extra, like extra hours, like just do light intensity things like juggling against a wall or like passing with a partner, nothing too intense. Um, you don't want to like train like too much, like too many intense sessions. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, you don't want like injuries. That's like, that's the last thing you want. Yeah. So Jordan, are you in season right now? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We have. So we do train. Yeah, we train two hours a day, and then we have two games per week. So that's a lot. That's like a yeah. lot, like heavy load. So I haven't been doing like too many workouts because I ha I've just been wanting to keep injury free, and that's worked. I haven't missed a game this season. So like, 
I'm doing good, like maintaining, like not trying to overtrain. Um, and then once the season ends, obviously I'm going to try to do more individual sessions and work on more yeah. strength, explosiveness and things that I just need to work on. Yeah. And that is uh, another point. So you're in season, you train two hours. Uh, I'm currently, I could say off season, but I don't have, I don't really have a team. Mm -hmm. So if you're like my situation, try to get, I try to get like, uh, play and play football matches as, as much as you can mm -hmm. like one hour or, or two hours try to get some uh in, individual sessions mm -hmm. uh, as much as you can and some body weight will work up so in total it will be like three to four hours a day mm -hmm. if you want to really improve but this is only if you're uh, off season yeah if, if you're in off season mm -hmm. don't do it if, if you're in season because uh, it will be so much uh, hard uh, to, to to do it mm -hmm. for, for a muscle. Yeah, and also another form of training I think you guys should be trying to implement into your days is like like mental training. So it doesn't have to be long. Usually I just, um, a part of my morning routine, I usually try to get in like 10 minutes of breathing practice every day. So I'll just, I'll usually I'll just like sit in my backyard um, and I'll just try to do like breathing practices of like five seconds in, five seconds out and try to like clear my thoughts. And I feel like that's a good way to start off the day and um, train yourself mentally, like visualization as well. I try to do that during it. Um, visualization is like really important to um, just to get, just to settle, your, settle yourself mentally. So I think that's something that I, I would include in like training, not just soccer training, but mental training as well. Um, let's see. Kareem says, I'm a skillful player. That's the way I play. Should I change it? Um, I think I, I'd, I'd stay away from changing your play style. I think if you're a skillful player, like, I think you should stay true to it. But, you know, like, just realize that coaches aren't going to recruit you for doing a rainbow flick over someone. They're going to want you to be, like, doing effective skills that change the game. Like, how are you changing the game? So just realize that, um, you know, if you're a skillful player, don't change the way you play, but just realize that um, you should ask yourself, like, how are your skills affecting the game? Um, are they just making you flashy or are they helping the team? So if you're a skillful player, try to make it so that your skills help the team and not just yourself. I think that's the best way I can put that. And just use it when, when you need it. Like, yeah. Don't use it in, mm. in front of the goal or use it in the, in the midfield. Mm. Definitely. Um, let's see. Um, someone asked, are there free clubs in your countries and accommodation? Um, free clubs, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I think maybe he's just talking about um, probably like recreational league. Um, there, are, there are like rec leagues that you can join. But uh, I think if you want to like, like really propel your career, I, I definitely consider like joining a like an established club. Um, uh yeah it's it's not all pay to play in the united states here um if you're good enough you will like there is accommodation for certain teams but um try to join the best team you can and if your financial situation isn't there then i think you know just play on whatever team you can and get that experience in because that's the most important thing i think um let's see Uh, how to improve as a center back. Um, let's see. Um, there are individual drills I've had on my page um, that work on, like, your technical aspects in, in like, center back situations, getting better at headers. Um, so definitely check that out if you haven't seen them already. But um, improving as a center back, I'd say, like, 
Uh, I think center back is honestly like a lot of a mentality thing. That's what I've realized. The more I've played the position is that you don't, you know, being technical is really important as a center back these days as well. But if you want to be like a really standout center back, you really just have to have like a really gritty mindset. Like you have to not only be in like, be able to play in possession, but you have to be willing to do the dirty work for your team. Um, like the slide tackling, the headers, like clearing the ball. Like it's, it's really important to have that mentality as a center back. Um, and you also have to have that composure since you are the last line of defense, you have to have that composure of playing out the back, um, like dealing with awkward situations at the back too. So um, it all comes down to composure. Um, that comes down to like, if you want to improve at it, um, I think it's good just to play that more in games and scrimmages um, just to get that experience. Um, and there are ways you can work on it individually. But at the end of the day, I think center back is mostly a mindset thing. And you should definitely be you, – you can't be a pretty player as a center back. You have to be, like, doing the dirty work for your team. So that's why I'd say if you want to play in that position. Uh, let's see. Someone said money kills vibes. I agree. Um, that's kind of just the nature of the game. That's kind of how everything is in life. Like money obviously isn't like money isn't my sole motive, but money is important. Like you can't, I can't ignore that fact. Um, but that's just the harsh reality of the game, especially today. I think. Um, I think we got a question. What is your best quality as a player? Best quality as a player? I think my best quality would definitely be... Uh, I think my best quality is defending. I feel like that's what I've always like gravitated towards. And it's kind of the opposite with my twin. My twin likes to dribble a lot um, and be like more creative on the ball. But I like, I've like. i honestly... like I've played sit, like center defensive mid a lot of my career. Center back, right back. And I've always had like a defensive mindset. And... Um, I feel like that also includes like, like I like I like being able to distribute. Like I like being able to lead out the back. That's kind of always how I, what I've gravitated towards. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I don't know where that's come from. Like usually people like being on the ball more and just being more creative and having fun with it. But I honestly love the feeling of like slide tackling and defending and winning the ball back for the team. That's always the kind of play style I've gravitated towards. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm a center mid, so obviously my my qualities are passing. Mm -hmm. It's the best quality I got. A vision, a little bit, and that's it. Yeah, that's good. Have you played midfield, like, pretty much your whole youth career? Or have you played, like, have you tried, like, different positions? Because I've played, like, a lot of different positions. I've played – I think I started out as a center back when I first joined my club team. And I think I moved to right back. And then I think ever since then I was a defensive mid. No, uh, I started as a striker back home oh, okay. when I was a kid. Uh -huh. Kids like to, to score goals. So I started as a striker. And then uh, in a match, my coach uh, just told me to play center mid, and I played well. I scored a goal, and uh, from that I began to, to to play as a center mid and to improve my passing, my visions, and also my defending. Because uh, sometimes I, I play center mid, uh, center defensive mid. Mm -hmm. So it's all it's also important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think especially when you're, like, a young player. Um, I've tried, like, I, I've played right wing, too, like, striker. I've played multiple positions. And so I think definitely when you're young, you should be playing as many positions as possible. Even though I gravitated towards defensive mid, I feel like the more you can play different positions, 
the more not only are you getting like better at different positions, but also like let's say you've played left wing before and you play against a good right back and there's certain things the right back is doing that makes it extremely hard to play as a left winger. So that makes it easier for, let's say, then you transition into playing right back. Now you know how to defend a left winger better. Um, you know how to defend yeah. against better left wingers. I think De Bruyne talked about this when he said um, how he's played in like multiple positions and how that's helped him. That's definitely something like it helps you learn about different positions, like what their weaknesses are. And, you know, you can exploit that when you play in other positions. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. Mm, let's see. Uh, We've got a question. What's the best source of energy for footballers? Best source of energy. Um, I think he... Nutrition-wise. Oh, nutrition. I think he means. Yeah. Well, yeah. the basic answer for me is like just protein and carbs. Um, I th yeah. yeah, I always try to have like, I always try to eat at least three to four hours, like especially before a game. I always want my food to like digest, and then maybe like an hour beforehand, I'll have like a banana, like as a snack. Um, yeah, definitely like best source of energy. Like eat a lot of fruit as an athlete. Um, good like high quality like lean sources of protein um and try to get good sources of carbs in as well i'd say good examples of that is like like sweet potatoes like brown rice um and yeah i just try to like for i try to get lean sources of protein as well um i try to like i'll have like protein shakes every now and then but i usually like to have like like eggs or chicken or you know, like stuff, like stuff yeah. like that. I prefer to have that over protein, like, but protein shakes, I, I just use that as like an immediate source since it's like easily digestible. I like to have that. Yeah. And it's easily, the, the best source is carbs, carbohydrates, try to eat rice, mm -hmm. some bread, I think, pasta maybe. Yeah. Not all bread and, though. Uh, like white bread, you want to kind of stay away from that. Uh, I'd say like yeah, just wheat bread, the, yeah. Um, let's see. Can you make a video about breathing techniques and tips to save energy in a game? I was actually gonna just make a video. I was actually gonna make a video soon about like breathing techniques, um, tips to save energy in a game. Save energy. Well, I don't think that should be your mindset in a game. I don't think you should be trying to save energy. I think it's good to be smart. Like you don't have to be running around all the all over the pitch wasting your energy, but um, it comes down to like your fitness and like you know like how badly do you want it? I feel like if you stop focusing too much on how tired you are in a game, you'll start to be able to run more um, because like I think it's all in your head. I feel like if you're getting tired in a game, um, it's kind of your brain telling you to slow down. Um, you know, even if like you will be physically exhausted, but the mental exhaustion is really what takes a toll on you in the game. And so if you can pass that, that's what, that's why mental training is so important is because, you know, that's like, that's where like hard work ethic comes from. It's so your mind, it's what your mind tells you to do. And so you will be physically exhausted. Um, but it all comes down to the way you talk to yourself and that will help you push better like to become more fit in a game basically um but breathing techniques yes i will be making a video on that probably going to do a youtube video on that too i think that's really important brian asked what's the who's the best player you've played with uh brian 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 i guess i can't really answer that can i <laughs> actually i don't know <laughs> I yeah. I don't really remember. You don't remember? No. I think he he's now in the US. Was that? He's playing I think he's now in the US, I think. He's playing college soccer 
but I don't know if it's uh, D1 or D2. I don't really remember. But oh, okay. uh, yeah, I, but, but I have him on Instagram. Mm. Yeah, send it to me after. I'm interested in that. But um, yeah, we're playing in the like NC. I keep butchering this name. NCJAA. It's like the community college version of college football. So um, it's not like D1 or D2 or anything like that. But it's like the level. I think like the level below that, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't see any other questions. Let me just scroll through all these to see if we missed any. Yeah, tell me if you see any questions, and we'll get to them. Yeah, we answered all. Oh, I found a question at like the top. So, any advice for a right back? Um, for a right back, uh, I've played there before, and I've played against right backs. And I'd say the best thing for right backs is um, play to your situation. So, there's times where you do want to force out, and where you do want to force in. Um, I think as a right back, it's important to note that if you're playing against like a pacey winger. Um, definitely try to make sure that they're not using their pace, obviously, as much as possible. So, like, talk to your teammates and make sure that – and tell, your, like, your midfielders that since this is, like, a pacey winger, you want to, like, force them inside. You don't want to have them, like – if that winger's faster than you, you obviously don't want that winger to, like, go down the line. So you want to force them in and have, like, cover from your midfielders, and that will keep the winger from go- dribbling down the line and will probably want them to, like – play it back um if you're playing against like a really skillful winger like neymar and that winger just wants to like flick it over your head um i'd say you probably shouldn't be diving in too much to too many challenges if that winger can really just like flick it over you um you want to be smart like kind of keep your distance but you also want to make sure that you're close enough to where you're making them uncomfortable um so obviously so, so like as a right back you want to like play to the situation and um, talk to the teammates around you and tell them, like, you know, what are the strengths and qualities of this winger and how do you want to mark them so that um, your teammates can help you out if you need it. Um, that's the best advice I can give for that. And it's not all about I, – I think especially in today's game, like, right backs and left backs, they're very involved in the attack. Like, Alexander Arnold and Robertson, they're really high, like, up the field. Um that's why I've seen like with better opposition these days is that they always get involved in the attack. So I think it's good as a right back and a left back to make sure that you're good on the attacking end, but make sure you're even better on the defending end. Cause obviously you're the last line of defense. And that's, I think the most important thing. And also we've got the same question. How do you approve a fullback? Yeah, it's a, it's actually the same thing, the same thing. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, like a modern day fullback, though, I think you definitely need to be proficient with your attacking. Um, so, like, work on your crossing, work on your first touch down the line. Um, it's not all about pace, but I think it's um, positional awareness as well. Because if you're a fullback and you're too high up the pitch, and the other team wins the ball back and you're not quick enough to recover or like your positioning's too bad or you're too high up the pitch, then like other teams can exploit that really easily. So um, make sure your positional awareness is good. And, you know, you're attacking, like you're crossing, even shooting too, you'll probably get on the end of some chances. So. Um, yeah. And try to watch the pros, like watch mm-hmm. proper games, Premier League. And uh, if you could analyze some players, some plays, it will help you out mm-hmm. a bit. Maybe. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I think we've got all the questions. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add to yeah. this? No, just wanted to thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for, for hopping. Yeah, thank you so much for hopping on the live. Um, I'm really glad we talked about the like playing abroad. Um, I've got a lot of questions about that, and I think it's just really important to narrow down and focus on all like 
realize that there's a lot of factors that play into it. And, you know, I think, I feel like it's really important for any player out there to um, make sure they're taking into consideration um, what are they doing right now? Like, how are they saving their money? How are they being responsible? Um, that all plays into the, your football career and where you can take that into your future. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And uh, if you could save the live so people could watch it again. Yeah, sure. Uh, how do you do that? I don't know how to do that. Actually, when you close the live, I think you'll have some options to save. Um, I think so. I think so, yeah. I'll try. Let me see. Uh, yeah, do I just press the red the X on the top and then it will tell me that? Yeah, I okay. think. Just for it. Yeah. All right, all right. Thank you so much for coming on the live, bro. Really nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, all right see you, man.